I tested over 180 AI image generators to figure out which are the best and free ones for making anime. Some of them were pretty bad. Some of them even charged you money for it. Don't worry, I'm only going to show you the best ones that produce legit high quality images. To give you an apples to apples comparison, we're going to be using the same prompt for each platform. It's a pretty simple prompt, so one girl with short black hair, blue eyes, wearing a plain white shirt, denim shorts. I'm sure you can generate a much better looking image if you refine this further, but for this video let's just keep things simple. For the negative prompt, we have all the standard stuff like easy negative, get rid of all the weird fingers, weird hands, low quality, worse quality, watermarks, copyrights, etc. But that's it, let's get started. So let's start with a banger already. The first tool is called cart.ai. This uses stable diffusion models to generate super high quality images and you can do all of this for free online. So let's just sign up for an account and I'll show you how it works. Alrighty, now that we are logged in, first of all, I just want to warn you that there could be 18 plus content here, so to blur out or hide that content, simply click on green mode. So I'll just show you the usage real quick. This is completely free to use, you are given 200 stamina per day. If you scroll down to the FAQ section and click on this question, you can see that one regular image only consumes one stamina and then ultra clear images consume four stamina. So if you're given 200 stamina, that's more than enough per day. So let's go ahead and generate some images. So simply click AI painting. All right, so here's the dashboard. Here is where we enter in our prompt. So let's copy this and paste it here. And then we have some settings that we need to tweak. So for the mode, we can leave it at default, but there's other modes that you can play with. For the model, Let's go ahead and expand this and click choose more so you can see what options you have. So if you go to explore more, you can see all the models that are available for use. A model, or the technical term is called a checkpoint, is basically an AI that is trained on thousands to millions of images of a certain style. So for example, this magic mix realistic is trained on lots of images of this realistic style. So the images that it would output will be aligned with this style. Alternatively, Counterfeit version 3, this is an AI that has been trained by this kind of a pastel anime look. So all the images that it will produce will be of this style. So think of the model as like what style you want to choose for your image. For us, we are going to go with Cetus Mix. And then LoRa is beyond the scope of this tutorial, but what a LoRa basically is, it's a micro version of a model. So you add this to supplement your model even further. So let's say we chose Cetus Mix as our model. This has been trained for anime images. However, let's say you want to add a capybara to your image. Well, this Cetus Mix has probably not been trained with any images of capybaras. So you got to add a capybara LoRa to have a realistic looking capybara in your image. So Alora is basically a smaller version of a model that supplements your base model. And then basic settings, so you can adjust the image quantity from one to four, we're gonna leave it at three for example. Um, the quality, you can choose standard high or ultra high, we're gonna choose ultra high. For image size, we will choose portrait. And then I just want to take a few minutes to go over these advanced settings because if you want to get good at image generation, you're going to have to learn these eventually. And these are settings that are common throughout most of the tools that we're actually going to use today. You'll see all of these names when you use Stable Diffusion as well. So I'll just go over this real quick so that you become familiar with them and you know roughly what they do. So negative prompt is basically what you would want to exclude in your image. So you don't want any like ugly faces, for example. You don't want any low quality images. So this is the default that it gives you. We're just gonna leave it at that. And then sampling method is basically the algorithm that you want to use to generate your image. Honestly, they're very similar. There's only subtle differences between each of these. Euler A tends to be the fastest. 
If you're going for quality, then DPM++ 2SA Keras or 2M Keras or SDE Keras tends to work well for anime images or realistic images. So for us, we're going to choose DPM++ 2SA. And then sampling steps, this is the number of iterations you want the model to go through before ending. Each iteration makes your image slightly better, slightly more detailed. But there's also a certain point where an additional iteration doesn't add much value and you're just wasting computing power. So if you drag it all the way to the left, so let's say 10 steps or lower, the image is probably not going to look good. It's lacking detail. It's just not iterated enough to generate a legit looking image. If you drag it all the way to 40, maybe it's too much and you're just gonna add detail over detail over detail and it doesn't really add much value. So usually the sweet spot is like 20 to 30. I would leave it at 20, but yeah, feel free to play around with this. And then CFG scale, or another word for this is guidance. This is basically how much you want the AI to follow your prompt. So if you drag it all the way to like three or zero, it's gonna give you a completely random image that doesn't follow this prompt. If you drag it all the way to the other end, let's say 15, it's going to make an image that is very literal and follows this exactly, which is often what you don't want. You're gonna get some strange results if it interprets this too literally. So usually the sweet spot is around like five to 10. Let's just leave it at the default of seven. So that's just a quick overview of some of these advanced settings that you should be familiar with to really customize your images and be good at image generation. So with that, let's go ahead and click run. Awesome, look at that. So three high quality anime images of a girl wearing a plain white shirt with denim shorts. These are really good quality. So if you want to save these images, simply hover over this and then right click and then save image as. Very straightforward. Now all of these images, they are currently around 800 times 1000 pixels. If you want to make this bigger, you simply click this upscale button. And you can choose different algorithms for the upscaler. We're gonna go with, since this is an anime illustration, let's go with this anime 6B one. And then scaling ratio is how much you wanna increase this by. So this is gonna make the image two times bigger. Let's click submit and see what we get. Awesome, so it's the same image, but it's increased the size two times and you can see the details are a lot clearer. So perfect, we can go ahead and right click and then save image. So there's a few other cool functions you can play around with in CART. One of them is called Control Net, where you can basically control the pose of your character, which is super cool. That's beyond the scope of this tutorial, but just so you're aware, that function does exist. Another one is image to image. So let's say we want to create an image based on one of the images we just generated. So let's choose this one. And first of all, it kind of reverse engineers the prompt for you. So here's the prompt that it predicted based on the image. So this setting here, denoising strength, is how much we want our new image to follow this image that we just uploaded. So if we drag this all the way to zero, then the image is going to look exactly the same as this. If we drag it all the way to one, then it's gonna be a completely different image. So for us, let's say we wanna keep it at like 0.8, and then we can use the same prompt that we had before, and let's leave everything else the same. Okay, and this is what it gave us. So this is the original image, and let's see what we have here. So, you know, it changed it slightly, put a logo here, the background, everything is just subtly different from the original image. Same with this one, the background has changed, her shorts are subtly different. And same with this one. So there you have it, that is image to image. And that is it. So again, this tool is called C-Art.
All right, if the first tool is too complicated, there's too many settings, then this is the tool for you. It's super simple and it can still produce high quality anime images. Let's just jump right in. So let's create an account first. Once you're in, simply click create new artwork. Now for each image, it generally takes around five beans. You're given 400 beans at the start, plus you get 100 free beans every day. So quite a generous amount of free images that you can generate every day. Let's jump right in and create some anime. We are going to paste in our prompt here. And then also let's choose a model. I'll show you your options. There's tons of different options you can choose from. And this is basically your model or your checkpoint. We are going to go with, let's try Blossom Light. And then we're also going to paste in our negative prompt. And then under models, you also have the option to select some spells. These are also called Loras in Stable Diffusion. So basically, these are predefined characters that you can add to supplement your image. I'll just show you some options real quick. So if there's a particular character from an anime that you want to generate, there could be already a predefined Laura or spell that someone has made of that character. So you can simply select it. And let's look at the settings real quick. So the sampling method, again, this is the algorithm. You're going to see these names again and again. Usually these two, like the TPM++ 2M Keras or SDE Keras or 2SA Keras, they produce the highest quality. So I would just leave it as the default. The number of steps is how many iterations you want the AI to run before ending the image. And each iteration would add slightly more detail to the image and refine it further. But at a certain point, it's not gonna add much value. So if you drag it all the way to like 150, it's gonna be too much. So let's just leave it at the default of 30. And then scale, this is the same as CFG scale or guidance. So how much do you want the model to follow your prompt? So if you drag it all the way to the left, then it's not gonna follow it. It's gonna give you a completely random image. If you drag it all the way to the right, then it's gonna be too literal and give you some weird results. So let's just set it to the default of 10 and then canvas size. Let's choose large portrait. All right, that's it. So we can simply click generate. Very nice. So you can either download this or if you want to make this larger, you can click enhance and then you can increase the size by like one times, two times, etc. You can resize the width or height. There's a lot of different options you can do to enhance your image even further. So feel free to play around with that. Let's generate a few more images. So I'll keep all the prompts the same and just click generate. Really nice. So you can see it's, it's super simple. You don't really need to tweak a lot of settings. The UI is really straightforward. So there you have it. This tool is called Yodayo. It's one of the simplest and easiest tools for you to get started and still create some awesome looking anime images. All right, next tool is also super cool. This is called Tensor or TensorPlay. The best thing about this tool is it's completely free and there are no limits, at least that I'm aware of. So if you click on About Us, you can see it's 100% free. And yeah, I, I've been generating a few images. I haven't gotten any messages saying I'm over the limit. So I don't think there is a limit. The downside is you can only generate one image at a time, as you'll see in a second. Let's first of all sign up for an account, then we can start making images. Alrighty, so once we're in, first thing we need to do is select a model or checkpoint. Let's search anime under categories and see what we get. So you can see a lot of things that we've seen before, right? So there's counterfeit, there's pastel mix, there's ghost mix. So let's try this one, anime pastel dream. All right, so you should be familiar with these options now. Let's copy our positive prompt and then copy our negative prompt. And then in advanced settings, here's the sampling method. You're gonna see these terms again and again, so eventually you'll become familiar with them. Again, Uller A tends to be faster. These three tend to produce the best quality in my experience. So DPM++ 2SA Keras or 2M Keras or SDE Keras. We're gonna go with 2M Keras. Image size, let's go with the biggest one. 
Sampling steps is the number of iterations of training. So the more steps you have, the more details. It's going to add to the image, but at a certain point, it's going to be too much. If you have too few steps, then it's going to be blurry and lacking definition. So let's just leave it at the default of 30. Guidance is how much you want the AI to follow your prompt. So if you drag it all the way to the right, it's going to follow your prompt too literally and give you some weird results. If you drag it all the way to zero, it's not going to follow your prompt at all and give you a random image. So let's just go with the default of seven. And then C, let's leave it at a random number, which is minus one here and then click Generate. All right, so we've just generated this one. Let's expand this and see what we get. So overall, okay, the fingers are kind of weird here, but there are five fingers, I would say. And this is in the pastel style that we chose from the base model. So to download it, you can just click here. Or you can also click this one. You can share it on other platforms. Awesome. Let's try to generate a few more. So we can simply click rerun or change the prompt to whatever you want. All right, here's another one. She's all the way to the side for some reason, but that's okay. We can crop this out later. Let's go ahead and save this. And we'll run this a few more times. All right, one final image here. Let's save this to our computer. You'll notice the upscale button is grayed out, so you can't increase the size of your image. Same with the image to image function, that's grayed out, so that might be coming in the future, but currently you can't use it. So that's it for TensorPlay. This is completely free and there are no limits as far as I'm aware of. Okay, next tool is called Happy Accidents. Let's jump straight in and sign up for an account. All right, so once you're in, simply click this Create tab on the left menu, and we can start creating our images. So very similar to CR, we have these different settings here. So first of all, let's choose a model. There are plenty of models you can choose from. For us, since we're generating anime, let's search for anime and you can see a lot of different models. You can see a few ones that we've seen before, like Counterfeit, Ghost Mix is another common one, Pastel Mix. For us, let's go with this one, TMND Mix. And we simply paste in our positive prompt here. And to refine it further, it's always best to add in a negative prompt. So we'll paste that here. Number of images, we can generate one or two. If you want to generate more, you need to upgrade to the paid plan. I'll show you what that is like. So free plan, you get 100 image generations per month and it refreshes every month. And if you want to increase these limits, then you can check out these other paid options. We're just going to choose one image first. Image dimensions, let's drag this all the way up. Let's make this 640. And then by clicking this, this actually upscales it two times. So instead of 640 by 1000, it's going to be like 1200 by 2000. Inference steps, this is the number of steps, right? So again, the more steps you have, the more details would be added to your image. But at a certain point, there's no added value. And then if you have too few steps, then your image is just going to be blurry and distorted and lacking details. So generally 20 is a good amount. And then guidance, this is the same as CFG scale. So how much do you want your AI to follow your prompt? So dragging it to zero would be a completely random image. Dragging it all the way to the right would follow your prompt too literally and give you weird results. So let's just stick with seven. And then you can also add LoRa's. And then under advanced, you can select the algorithms that you want to run this with. Let's go ahead and click Generate and see what we get. And because we've checked this box, Higher Quality Generation, it needs to upscale it after generating the image, so it does tend to take a bit longer. Alrighty, so here's what we have. Let's click into this and see what we get. Alright, so here's the generation data. And let's expand this image and see what we get. So simply right-click and open Image in New Tab. 
So yeah, very nice details. You can see her fingers are kind of off, but you can fix that afterwards. But yeah, very nice. So if you want to save this, right, simply right click and then save image. All right, let's say we want to import an image that we've generated previously and base the new image off of that. Well, you can do that here. Let's go ahead and upload an image. And I will choose this one that we created in CART. And then image strength is kind of like the reverse of denoising strength. So the higher the value, the more it sticks to the original image. The lower the value, the more it doesn't follow the image. So let's try like 0.1 and then everything else we can leave it as is. All right, let's go ahead and click generate. Alrighty, let's click in and see this image. All right, so not bad. You can see here's the generation data. We based it off of this image that we generated previously. And this is what we got. Let's open it in a new tab to see the quality of this. So not too bad. You can upscale it further, definitely. But yeah, overall, it's, it's decent. Let's right click and save it. So there you go, this tool is called Happy Accidents. The next tool is called Starry AI. This is probably the simplest one out of all of the tools I'm going to share with you today. If you don't want to tweak with so many settings and just generate an image with a simple prompt, this is the one for you. So let's start creating. I'm going to have to sign up for a free account first. So I'll show you the pricing real quick. First of all, you're given five credits a day and each image generation can be one to two credits. So you can generate a decent amount of images per month. If you want to pay for more credits, here's the pricing. So let's go ahead and create some images. We're going to have to choose a style first. So we're going to create art and then we'll simply paste in our prompts as we did before. For the negative prompt, you need to enable remove from image. So here is where you paste in the negative prompt. And then for style, you can see we have a lot fewer options. We only have these ones. This is the only animate one. So let's choose that. And this is for image to image. So let's leave it blank for now. Canvas size, we can only choose portrait. And then runtime, this is like how long you want to run the model for. So a longer runtime would add more details to your image and generally make it higher quality. It does cost you more credit. So right now, this costs one credit. If you increase the one time to 100, you can see it costs two credits now. But let's just give this a shot. So you can see the settings are a lot simpler. There's no like CFG scale. There's no sampling methods or all of that fancy stuff. It's just enter in your prompts and choose a style and then click generate. Not bad, not bad. Let's expand this. And it actually gave us four images. So here's the first one. Here's another one. You can see some of them are not really following the prompt, which is plain white shirt. And we can't set the guidance or the CFG scale. So that's one of the limitations of this platform, but it is super simple. So here's another good one. So to download, simply click download. And it will download all images into a zip file. So you can see the, the image is pretty small, what you can do is upscale it. So let's say we want to go with, this one is not bad. So uh, let me see. Yeah, let's go with this one. We can upscale this. So let's click on upscale. And if you upscale it to eight times, this is going to make it 4,000 times 5,000. It's going to cost you one credit. So let's try this. Okay, so it's finished and let's click download. and see what we get. All right, so definitely a lot crisper, a lot sharper. Super simple. Let's let's try it with a few more. Let's try to generate another set. 
Okay, let's see what we have here. So this one is not bad. The, the straps are kind of weird here. But let's see. This one looks good. You can see her, her thumb is kind of messed up here, but we can edit that out later. This one is also not bad. All right, let's upscale this one. So again, let's click upscale. And we'll use one credit for that. Very nice. So there you have it, Starry AI. The credits are kind of limited, so you only get five per day, but it refreshes every day. So just come back tomorrow, you get five more credits. So super simple tool to create some nice quality anime images. All right, now I've saved the best for last. This is also the hardest one to learn. But if you're serious about image generation, you're gonna use this eventually. This is the platform to use for Stable Diffusion. It's called Automatic 1111. It's completely free and open source. You can even install it locally and run it on your computer without internet. I'll include a link in the description with instructions on how you can install it locally to your computer. But in this video, we're gonna keep it super simple. We're gonna run everything online in your browser using Google Colab, and you don't even need a GPU. So before we actually run Automatic 11.11, first thing we need to do is choose a checkpoint or model that you wanna use for your image. This defines what style your image would be in. To find a style that you would like to use, Civitai is a nice platform for that. There is a lot of 18 plus content here, so make sure you have the save filter on and, and yeah, just don't open it when you're at school or work. Now let's say we want to find an anime model to use. All you got to do is search anime and then click search. So it's going to give you all the results it found for anime. What you want to do is go down to filters and make sure that you are only searching for checkpoints. A checkpoint is the base model that defines the style of the image. So there's a few ones that we've seen already. So pastel mix, anime pastel dream, so yeah, plenty of models for you to choose from. Once you've found the style that you would like to use for your image, if you're running Automatic 11.11 locally, you would have to download this in the folder models slash stable diffusion. But for us, we are gonna use Google Colab, so we don't need to actually download anything to our computer ourselves. Here's a really cool resource. So props to this guy, Nolana Tama for making a lot of Colab files that you can use. So each one of these Python notebook files is a automatic 1111 interface with a model or checkpoint pre-built. So let's say you want to go with this pastel mix. Let's search and see if this guy has pastel mix. And there you go. So simply copy this link and then paste it into Google Colab, which I'll show you in a second. For this video, let's go with the model called Cetus Mix. I really like the look of this. Really nice detailed images of anime. So let's search if there is a Cetus Mix here. And yes, there is. So simply right click and then copy link address. Next, we go to Google Colab. You'll need to sign into your Google account if you haven't already. And then in the GitHub tab, simply paste in the link we just copied and then click search. And it would automatically open this. And I specifically shared this resource with you because all you need to do is click this once. So we're gonna click run anyway. And that's pretty much the only button you have to click. And then we're gonna wait for, you can see the code is running now, it's downloading all the dependencies, etc. But we're gonna get a public URL to open Automatic 11.11. This is gonna take a few minutes. And something to note with Google Colab is you run it on your browser, you're basically borrowing Google's servers and Google's GPU to run Stable Diffusion for you. So you don't need a GPU yourself. The only downside of using Colab is you gotta run this every time. You can't really save your progress. So every time you reopen 
this notebook, you gotta start from scratch again. You gotta click run again and wait a few minutes for it to download and install everything again. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. You just gotta wait a few minutes every time for, for this to load. Okay, so this is exactly what we are waiting for. As long as you see this running on public URL, and then you see a code here, .gradio.live, this is what we wanna open. So we're gonna open this, and now you can see our automatic 1111 interface. So there's so many functions here. Like I said, this is the hardest interface to learn, but it's the most customizable. You can do so much with this interface. And there's just a lot more settings that are beyond the scope of this tutorial. For this video, we're just gonna do text to image and we're gonna paste in our prompt. So you can see the checkpoint or the model is already pre-selected here because we are running this one, which has it built in. If you're running this locally on your computer, then you'll need to click this drop down and then select Cetus Mix. And then for the sampling method, you should be familiar with this now. We've seen it a few times in this video. So again, Euler A tends to be the fastest. These three tend to give the highest quality. Let's go with 2M Keras. Sampling steps is the number of iterations you want the model to take in generating the image before stopping. So let's set this to 25. And then here's where you can totally customize the width and height to whatever you want. Let's do 700 times 1000. Batch count and batch size is just how many images you want to generate in one go. So let's do four images. And that's pretty much it. Let's click generate. Awesome. And like I said, automatic 1111, this is completely free and open source. There's no limitations. There's no paid plan. You can generate unlimited images. So let's click on each one and see the quality. So here's the first one. Gosh, they all have like wet clothes and it looks like they, they all want to undress for you. It's slightly disturbing. And to save it, simply right click and then save image as. So I'll save this one, this one. And really quickly, I'll show you some of the other features. So image to image is where you can upload an existing image to guide your AI on what to create. So let's say we want to upload this image that we created from CART. And for the prompts, we're going to paste in the same one that we had. For the dimensions, we're going to put 700 by 10,000. Really quickly, for resize mode, you're given four options. We're going to go with crop and resize. What this means is we've since we've set the image to 700 by 1,000, or the ratio is 7 to 10, if this ratio is not 7 to 10, it's going to crop the image by 7 to 10 and truncate the sides. But again, there's a lot of settings. It's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Actually, if you want me to do a tutorial on all of these settings in Automatic 1111, let me know in the comments below. The sampling method, let's try SDE Keras this time. And then batch count, let's make four images. And then denoising strength, you've seen this before. So this is basically how much you want the model to follow this image. If you drag it all the way to the left, it's gonna be exactly this image. If you drag it all the way to the right, it's gonna be a completely different image. So let's do like 0.75, which is the default, and see what we get. Really nice. Let's see the images that it has generated. You can see it's got an extra hand here, which is a bit creepy, so we're not gonna use this one. But the rest look pretty good. This one looks good, I'm gonna save this. This one is good as well. So let me save that. And then one last thing, if you go to the extras tab, this is where you can upscale your image. Let's say for the image that we just saved, which is 700 by 1000, you wanna make that bigger. All you gotta do is select your size here. So let's say we wanna make it two times bigger, then we would resize it by two. And then you simply select an upscaler algorithm. For anime, this one works pretty well. Or Forex Ultra Sharp, 
is generally good for everything. So let's try that. You can also mix two upscalers together. So let's say you want to mix both of these. And then this setting is how much of the second upscaler you want to mix. So 0.4 would mean 60% of it would be 4x ultra sharp. And then 40% of the upscaling would be this. But for us to make this super quick, I'm just gonna deselect this and only have one upscaler and simply click generate. So like before, just gotta click this to open it and then right click to save the image. So that's a really quick overview of Automatic 1111. Like I said, there's a lot of settings here, but if you wanna get good at image generation, this is the one to use. It's completely free. There's unlimited usage, unlimited customizability. So yeah, let me know if you want me to make a tutorial on this. So that's it for the best image generators for anime that I could find. If you want to discover more AI tools, be sure to check out our website at ai-search.io. We've compiled the most complete list of AI tools for pretty much everything.